Hello everybody, Novanoid here, and in today's video we're going to be talking about oscilloscopes. Now, here I have the Tektronix 2230 digital oscilloscope, but the cool thing about mine is it also acts as an analog oscilloscope. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do with an oscilloscope is hook up a probe. Um, so, you'll notice that the probes have a BNC connector, which is nice because once you plug them in and twist the knob it doesn't come out easily because it's locked in place. Now, the probes oftentimes have a little switch on them and this switch allows you to uh, do a 10 times or a 1 times uh, voltage multiply. So what that'll do is say I have it on 10 times and say I have a 10 volt uh, source. Now if I have it plugged into the 10 volt source, it will display that on the oscilloscope as one time, one volt. So that's pretty simple. And also on the probe, there should be a ground connector. Now this one has a little hook on it to hook to ground, but uh, you might have an alligator clip or something else. So anyway, that you're going to want to hook to ground, obviously, and this is where you're going to hook to your uh, circuit, wherever you want to look on your circuit. So something cool we can do to test out our oscilloscope is we can simply touch it. Now you're going to notice that a sine wave shows up. Now if we save this waveform, we can well, also, I'm using the digital mode on my oscilloscope now. If we go into uh, the waveform and use these boxes to line up where the waveform repeats itself, we can figure out the frequency of the wave. So now I have it lined up, and it is showing 60 hertz which you might be able to guess it is mains mains power and that is because when I touch this my body is acting as an antenna and since uh, when uh, it's AC it creates magnetism well to any circuit creates magnetism a magnetic field but my body can pick it up because it is AC it's the same reason transformers work. Um, anyway, if we switch back to analog mode. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. This button, when I bought this, it, it's used, obviously. <laughs> the scope is from like the 90s, late 80s, I think. And this button's kind of jammed. So, sorry about that. Anyway, so I'm going to explain what these knobs do, because it might look a little bit daunting at first. So the first knob we're going to take a look at is the coupling. Now these little switches are the coupling, and it allows you to couple AC, ground, or DC. For this, on most purposes, you're going to use uh, AC but say you wanted to make sure that your line or it was lined up with the uh, x-axis so to do that you just switch it to ground move this knob which is the position knob and it allows us to move the line back to the center so then I'd switch it back to AC cup now this is channel 2 which would allow me to hook up another probe and view two waveforms at the same time. And oscilloscopes often have one to four channels, uh, which is useful if you're actually needing to view multiple waveforms at the same time. Now, this knob is only on older oscilloscopes. And this, what this does, is when you turn this knob, 
it adjusts the intensity of the CRT beam. Because this is a cathode ray tube and there are um, electrons flying and this is the phosphor screen. The electrons hit the phosphor screen. It releases a photon and it allows you to see it. And there is one electron gun at the back of this which is uh, creates a problem, and I'll talk about that problem in a minute. Um, anyway, what the uh, the CRT has to do is it has to deflect the electron beam, and it does. So it shoots the electrons at the phosphor, and it will create this visible image. Uh, beam find just does that, it defocuses it and allows you to find where say you move this off screen I can find it that way. But I'm just going to move that back and this knob right here determines which of the uh, channels is being shown. This knob controls the time per uh, division. So we can slow it down to the point where we can see the electron beam very visibly. What else? Um, so that's pretty much all you're going to have to know. Also here's the focus knob. This is only on the old oscilloscopes with CRTs. So now I'm going to hook up a waveform generator and show you some waveforms. But first, before we do that, I want to explain about the CRT again. So on the older oscilloscopes, there's going to be this knob, which is add, alt, and chop. Now, this is only a problem if you have two channels plugged in. So say I had two uh, channels plugged in what this would do is this was would add the voltages of the two channels now alternate what you you're going to be using alt or chop most of the time so alt has the beam alternate between the waves so it'll draw one then draw the other right after and then chop it will go between the waves really quick so this one draws the entire one, and this one chops between the two. And that's a problem because there's only one electron gun at the back. So anyway, uh, I will hook up a waveform now, so that we can view it. Now I'm simply going to hook up this to an aux cord that is hooked up to a tone generator, since I do not have a function generator. Um, available right now. So now I have the uh, tone generator hooked up and as you can see the uh, oscilloscope is displaying the waveform. Now I'm going to adjust the voltage per division and now I'm going to zoom in on the waveform by uh, changing the time per division. Now as you can see, this is a pretty nice looking waveform. Now I can adjust the frequency on the computer up to 20,000 hertz. And if I were to switch it back to save mode, I could view this and figure out how many hertz the wave is the frequency of them. I keep saying hertz, but I should say frequency. As you can see, it displays roughly 20,000 hertz. So that's fairly accurate. Um, what else can we do? I can also show you something using the XY mode of the oscilloscope. And the XY mode just uses the channel 1 as the X axis and the uh, channel 2 as the Y axis. 
So if I uh, do that, hold on. Okay, so here's an example of something you can do in X1 mode. This is a clock drawn entirely by using um, JavaScript. Uh, as you can see, I have this hooked into my laptop, which is um, plugged in via a jumble of cords down there. Uh, and that allows us to display this clock. <clears throat> now, the clock is being drawn using two waveforms. There's some various other things you can do in XY mode. For example, you could show oscilloscope music, which, if I close that. Now, unfortunately, I do not have the lossless audio, so this looks quite terrible. Um, here, I can show you something slightly better. And unfortunately, I cannot play the audio, but you can see what it looks like. Anyway, that gives you some possibilities to screw around with your oscilloscope. I would also like to give a brief demonstration of how you might use this oscilloscope in a real scenario. So I'm going to show you how, you how you could use it hooked up to something. So here I have it hooked up to a RGB LED. Now I'm just going to hook up uh, the probe to the, oh let's say the blue portion of the LED. Okay. Now this is hooked up to an Arduino, which I have plugged into my computer, which is hooked up to some a code segment that I've made that communicates to the Arduino via serial. Uh, and if I run this program, it should be able to produce colors that we pick using pulse width modulation. So if I go up here and pick a color, Let's say just blue. Now, since it's 255, that will, that should, when I click it, it should go up quite a bit, and the voltage is up constant because it's constantly blue. And also, if I say pick a color, that isn't entirely blue. It's 64 blue, 255 green. And if I set that color, as you can see, it's doing pulse width modulation, which means it's only on a portion of the time. Now that's the blue portion of the LED. And obviously the green portion's on a different amount of time. Just to show you, that's what the color of the LED is. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's been a while. Uh, I just thought I'd show you the guys this, because it's somewhat interesting to me. To keep the video short, I'm going to cut it here. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.